Welcome back to The Coding Circus. Today we are going to talk about a different way of getting in our actions to our objects, whether it be a, a shape object or it be an avatar object. Right now, the way we have of adding actions are the actions happen either simultaneously, two actions happening at the same time, or one action after another. And the problem with that is if we wanted to control um, a sphere and then at the same time control a ball, we kind of have to keep track of what um, what's going on because the both actions will happen at exactly the same time as the program starts as opposed to putting in a delay or, or having something happen to cause that event. And that's really what we want to look at um, rather than right now, the only events that we have looked at much are the, the grabber events, right? We can cause something to happen when we grab an object and we can add an action that way. But really, um, the action in the code, everything kind of stops when that happens. And we have to wait for that to complete before it can move on. And sometimes that can be really kind of complicated in our program to code and handle in terms of getting things to happen on different events um, at the same time. So we're going to look at a new method of adding in actions to our things, our objects, uh, called tasks. And a task is a bit of code that will sit there and listen for an event to happen and everything else in the code can continue to happen. So this can sit there and wait for a key to press or wait for some kind of thing to happen uh, like a, a sound to play or some other action to end and it can sit there and wait for that to happen and wait forever for that to happen and once it does happen then it can execute its code and it has no effect on anything else that's going on. So it kind of just assigns a task for our object to accomplish and we can kind of ignore it. Now we can also loop it so that way it constantly listens for like a key press which gives us the ability to do things like make our character walk around the screen just by using the keyboard uh, which becomes really really useful when we're trying to build some kind of game instead of just having our avatar stand there and then maybe follow uh, walk from one spot to another using um, a walk to method which we'll talk about today as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at our code here. I'm going to add in all the stuff that we've been adding and add in an avatar so we recognize a lot of these things. Add in this task is the new thing here. Import this task has to be in there in order for Wizard to be able to handle these tasks. So that's another class. And we have our avatar put in, and I'm just going to use the VCC. Actually, we'll, we'll use the VCC female this time to be balanced here. Okay. So I'm going to add in a task, and it goes inside of a method. And I'm going to call it fade and appear. So anytime you add a task and you want to make sure that everything kind of waits until this is done completing. So in this method, everything is going to sit here and wait until the avatar has faded to zero and it's going to take two seconds to do that. Then it's going to print done fading. So it's going to wait until this action is done before it prints done fading. So it can be sitting here waiting while at the same time doing other things. So that avatar could be fading out and something else could be happening at the same time. Then it's going to print done fading and then it, again it's going to wait until it's done returning the fade, bringing it back to, to full visibility to a one. And again that's going to take two seconds and it's going to print um, done appearing. So if I want to add that task, I have to schedule the task using the viz task scheduler. So I'm going to just say my task is equal to viz task 
dot schedule fade and appear and now python will take care of the rest i don't need to do anything it's as soon as this command runs it's going to do this fade action for me so let's try this and you see my avatar fades out and my avatar then comes back and of course goes back to idle one because we know that is um, what avatars do once you've completed an action they always go back to this kind of idle position which we could fix that by putting that negative one in and it would stop that from happening but i think i like the idle position so let's look at another task i'm going to create a task called big and small now traditionally you would put all of these defined methods up at the top and then you would add in all the tasks so we might restructure this when we're all done but for right now it's okay to do this so i can kind of show you the differences so this one big and small we're going to have a pause so viz task dot wait time and it's going to wait one second and again it's another yield so it's going to wait for a second then it's going to set the scale of the avatar to twice its size and then it's going to wait another second with a yield so it's going to really sit there and wait and then it's going to set the avatar scale again to one and i've looped this so it'll happen over and over and over again and in fact i think i'm going to loop this one too the fade and appear and the way i'm looping this is with what's called a, a while loop we've looked at this before but this while loops kind of interesting in that it's always true the, the condition is always true so it's going to be an infinite loop it's going to constantly run forever and ever once i start it so i'm going to schedule the task now and i'm going to call it task two and let's see what happens when this runs now notice she's fading in and out but at the same time she's changing size so both those tests are running in parallel so even though that we have these wait times in there where it's waiting for it to get big and waiting for it to get small and it's waiting for it to fade in and waiting for it to fade out those are separated into different um programming strands where the computer is doing those actions separate from everything else and if i wanted to make her walk or set her um uh, state i could do that as well so let's say i go in here at my task and i go to my avatar dot um, state and i set that to let's say 13. So now she's still going to be carrying out state 13 and at the same time doing all these actions. So now I have a way of triggering actions um, and having those actions occur without having to worry about setting up pools and actions happening at different times and at save times. It gives me a lot more control over what happens. I could do a sequence where I have one action happen, then another, then another. And in fact, I can add a sequence to this and put a sequence as part of a task um, and have a whole series of actions occur. So those th ways of adding actions that we talked about before don't go away. We can still use them and they're useful. But this gives us the ability to really kind of control how and when these actions happen and what triggers them. So speaking of triggers, one good trigger is this viz act on key down. We look at we looked at this when we looked at the motions program. Remember we looked at this on key down? So I'm going to set the viz act on key down to a space. When I press the space, I just want to call the method my task.kill. Now, my task2, which is the big and small. It does not take any parameters so we don't need to put in any additional arguments that go in there so i don't need to put comma and add some more stuff so this is just going to kill task two when i press the space bar so let's run this 
And then the big and small should stop. Let's leave her small when I hit the space bar. So now she stops that action when I press the space bar, but all the other actions are still going on. It's still in the animated state and it's still fading in and out. Okay, so let's look at um, another kind of task in here. Let me kind of clear out some of these things. Well, actually, I'll leave them in. We can leave them in. I don't think she's too distracting. Suppose we add some text to the screen. And I want the computer, I'm going to go through this. I'm going to add it first and then go through it. to go through and show the letter that I'm pressing on the screen on the screen. So let's go through this task. First, I'm going to add a blank space to the screen. And then I'm going to set the position of that text to be just centered of the screen. And now I'm going to add a box, which has size 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, and I'm going to set its position. And now here I'm going to define my task. Again, it's going to be another while loop, so it's going to be constantly going. And this time, I'm going to set up what's called a data object. Now, I could use any name that I want, but that's what's going to be returned here. And it's going to yield. So it means it's going to wait for a key to be pressed. And it's just going to sit at this line waiting for a key to be pressed and not do anything else. No matter what else is going on, it's going to wait for that key to be pressed. When a key is pressed, it's going to send that key information to this thing called data object. Okay, so the reason why I have here none is because I'm not specifically saying I'm waiting for a particular key to be pressed. Um, I don't care which key was pressed. That's why this is equal to none. So if I wanted to specify that when the J was pressed, I would change that none to the letter J using single quotes. So here I'm just, just like I did in motions, right? Um, we would, we're looking at a particular character, but here, we're not looking for any particular character, and it's waiting. The task is to wait for a key to be pressed, specifically for viz task. And it's going to capture the key that we press, and it's going to store it in this key method for our data object that we created. And it's going to change the text of the data object to whatever key we pressed. And then I'm going to do a fade. Fade to zero, begin time, um, begin at one. That's the fade level time equals one. And then I'm also going to make this box here. Why not, right? Spin a little bit. So it's going to first fade and then spin. So the key will fade out and then the box will spin. It's going to do one and then the other, which is why I have both those in there. So you can see that it's going to wait for that text to disappear before the box spins. And then I'm going to schedule the task that happens outside of the method. Uh, to show the letter. So let's put this in here, run it, and our character will be running in the background, which I think is fine. So there's our box. You see the box in the left-hand corner? Let's just leave her small for now. I hit the space bar to kill that action. And I hit the space bar, and the box turned. Watch, now I'm going to put S. S, and it fades out, then the box turns. D, box turns. I'm, the reason why the screen's moving is because those are also actions to move the screen. So I'm going to use the letter K because that's nothing. So first it fades out, then the box turns because it's yielding for that action to occur. But notice all the other actions are just still happening. They don't care what's going on inside this method. So we can create these very kind of complex actions that some wait for each other to complete while other ones don't care. Uh, they don't care what else is going on because they're in separate methods. So the task really gives us a lot of control. Let's go ahead and create one more. Actually, we're probably going to create a, more than one more. I'm going to move the box around. And again, I'm going to use another while loop. So again, it's going to constantly be listening for a key to be pressed. So now when I press a key, not only is it going to fade, but it's also going to move the box. Now, if it's the data object is a one, 
I'm going to move the box one direction. The data box is a two, it's going to move it another way. Now let's talk about this set position that I've used. I've used something a little bit different. I've just used a point one and a one in this first x coordinate. So it's going to move it to the left and right. But I don't need to know where it started because I'm using this extra parameter which says with reference to where the box currently is. In other words, we don't need to know where the box currently is. We just say with reference to where the box is, move it 0.1 to the left. And then down here with reference to where the box currently is, move it 0.1 to the right. That gives us the ability to move things around the screen without having to necessarily do some math calculations as to how to move that character from its current position to another position. So like if it was at position 5, 0, 2, and we wanted to move to the left, then it would have to be negative 4.9. So it, it avoids having to do that math because then it would have to keep track of where it was. So this is a lot simpler when you want to move things around is using that viz.real um, local extra argument that we put in there. So let's go ahead and see how we this works. Make this full screen for us. We'll make her stop moving around. And now I'm going to press the letter. Oh, I hit the space bar. That's why it moved. K does nothing other than rotate the box. But when I press a 2, you see how a couple things happened there. The 2 showed up and faded out. But at the same time, because it's a separate task, the box moved over. And then once the 2 faded out, the box turns. So I can move the box across the screen. I'm doing it really fast, so it's kind of interfering with some of the other tests. Press 1, turn. Press 1, turn. So I can really give the user the ability to control how things move on the screen. Hey, if we add this animation to maybe a character walking, we could then make it look like our character's walking around the screen. That could be fun to do. Um, we can combine tasks together where we have one task call another task. And this is kind of advanced. Um, you might find a use for this, but I'm just showing you this just because it's something I want you to know what we can do. So the task I'm going to add right here is called execute experiment, but it's waiting. It's going to wait for this other method to execute before it does anything else. And the other method is called do trial. And this is going to change the background colors. Um, you know, of our entire world. So it's going to clear the color to one, and then it's going to clear the color where this is a one, so it's a red, green, blue, and then clear the color to uh, back to black. And each time, it's going to have a wait. The first wait is going to be a wait frame. It's going to wait for 30 frames to go by, which is a little different than wait time. So if you know anything about gaming, sometimes we can up our frame rate and make our game kind of look better. So in this case, we're going to wait for frame, and in the other case, we're going to wait for time. And this is going to happen three times. So it's going to do wait for a key X to be pressed. It's just going to wait. If I don't press the X key, it's not going to do the trial. It's not going to call that other method. Once I press the X key, it's going to flash the colors. Then once it's done flashing the colors, it's going to print, I'm done. And then it's going to go back up to the loop. And now we're at two. Wait for the X to be pressed. Flash the colors. Then I'm at three, um, sorry, I did zero, one, and then two. And then uh, once it's done at two, zero, one, then two, because it's not going to do three, it will finally say print done with experiment. So let's just kind of run this in the background. And we want to look at our print screen down here. And I'm going to press the X key. And you can see the colors flash. And trial zero is done. And it's just going to wait until I press the X again. Trial one's done. And I can wait as long as I want it. And I'm going to press the X one more time. And now it's going to say trial two is done. 
and now it's done with the experiment. And now when I press X, nothing happens because that loop that was listening for the key to be pressed is not going to happen anymore. So we can combine two tasks together um, and have one happen repeatedly. And then we can also do a signal. Uh, this one is when we have um, one object giving a signal to another object. And we, we'll, I'm going to show you this briefly. We can come back to this at another time, but I just wanted to put this here for sake of completion because this becomes more useful when we're talking about a more complicated system. I'm going to have two spheres here. Let's look at this code here. Uh, one will be one color, one will be another color. And I'm going to define this method and it's going to do like we did before. It's going to call another method and wait for that method to complete. It's going to be called wait for it. So it's waiting for a signal to happen. So then it's going to print it, whatever signal it received, and I'm scheduling that. So this is really just going to sit here waiting for this method to complete. So it's waiting for that signal. So let's look at wait for it. Uh, I'm going to create two spheres here, ball one and ball two. I'm going to create a color change signal using a viz task signal. So I'm telling viz that I'm creating a signal. A little different than a task. Here's the method we're going to use. It's called color ball. And it's just going to change the color signal and then wait. And then this is going to change the color signal and then wait. So it's going to change to red and then change to blue. And it's waiting for a signal. So this is sitting here waiting for that signal thing that we created, viz task signal, to kind of wave a flag around. That's what's waiting here, waiting for that signal to occur. If that signal, whatever it is, doesn't happen, then nothing will happen. And the signal that we're going to do is after the ball moves, we're going to change the color and send the signal. And then this one, after the ball moves back, ball one, we're going to send the signal. So it's going to move the ball. So we're going to schedule both those tasks, color ball and move ball. Color ball is going to be sitting there waiting for the signal. And then move ball will actually be moving the ball. So we're, we're doing this all. And we have two different balls, ball one and ball two. So we can kind of see the action happening. We could probably do this with one ball, but we're going to do this with two different balls. And you can see now, every time that gray ball moves, it's going to change the color of the other ball. And there we go. So just to kind of let you know some of the other things that we can do with task, we're going to be doing lots more with tasks in the next lesson. And that is about all I have for you today. I will see you next time.